John chapter 1 verse 5 The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We say together, Christ is our light. May the light of Christ rise in glory to dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Good morning, a very warm welcome to St. Mary's online service today on Easter Sunday, the 12th of April, 2020. Let us now worship together.
blood and righteousness I dare not trust The reading is taken from John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. The Empty Tomb Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still didn't understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them what he had said, these things to her. A few years ago, in our window facing onto the street uh, here on Bermondsey Street, uh, we had a piece of artwork in the in that window, and uh, um, that artwork was entitled "A Love That Speaks Louder Than Words." And as you can see from the slides that are now on the screen, uh, that that artwork consisted of a red cross in the midst of a series of paper hearts and each on each one of the paper hearts was uh, an, was words from from newspapers different events that were going on in the world events from personal lives uh, from world news uh, just different stories and words of course are what make up stories if you like reading a novel or any other kind of literature you'll appreciate words I know that uh, I personally love a good story and uh, the, of course Jesus stepped into the world and he was a human being just like us. He was part of a bigger story but also there was the story of his own life, a life that was full of fun, but also like us, frustration. A life that was full of friendships, but also those friendships would have involved at times struggle and sorrow, also pain. Jesus was a human being just like us. And he stepped into our story he stepped into the story, stories of other people uh, in his time and lived among us as a human being. And in the book of 1 John, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, we're reminded of what Jesus did. This is how we know what love is. That Jesus gave his life up to save us. He laid down his life for us. That verse reminds us of the great love of God in coming into the world in the person of Jesus to be with us, to identify with us, to be part of our lives, to walk with us. A love that speaks louder than words because words describe experiences and events, but they, they don't actually, they are not the events themselves. They are not the experiences themselves. But Jesus came to experience 
what we've what we experience a love that speaks louder than words and the cross speaks to us of that that love but it also speaks to us of a love that speaks louder than the desolation of the cross we're reminded of that when we remember mary who a woman who was the first witness to the risen jesus when jesus spoke to her in the garden she felt desolated she felt devastated at what uh, had happened and she thought at first that it was the gardener who was actually speaking to her but in fact it was jesus and she only recognized him when he called her by name and so a love that speaks louder than the desolation of the cross jesus stepped into and back into the world after dying a terrible death on the cross mary was the first person to meet the risen jesus but it also speaks to us of a love that speaks louder than isolation and this is particularly pertinent to us at this time it's brought very much into focus by our own experience at the moment and some of us more than others uh, those of us who live in families of course have people around us but there's many people who are living alone and who are suffering perhaps from the symptoms of the coronavirus but also are simply having to be isolated because that's what we're all doing we're isolating uh, in order to to reduce the infection rate but it is a real test for our faith to live in isolation because as human beings we're made to to mix with other people but this love that speaks louder than isolation tests us because when we're isolated we're in a situation where there's no one left and do we have the faith in that situation to believe that Jesus is with us and it was in John chapter 11 that Jesus spoke to Martha and a couple of weeks ago we read from from this passage where Jesus said at, to Martha on the death of her brother Lazarus he said I am the resurrection and the life the one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die do you believe this do we believe this that's the miracle of the resurrection that the crucified one the crucified one is now risen from the dead and is in the midst of us and so we believe in a love that speaks louder than words a love that speaks louder than the desolation of the cross and a love that speaks louder than the isolation that some of us find ourselves in at this time and even to a certain extent all of us because even now as we as we meet online we're not together uh, as a as a as a church community as a christian family and so isolation is challenging but in the midst of that jesus is still with us and that is the miracle of the resurrection that he has risen from the dead and he is with us now in our present experience and that brings me to the to the fourth point which really is that jesus's love is a love that speaks louder than death it was saint paul who said in philippians chapter one for what is life to me it is christ death then will bring more more than this life he says what is life to me it is christ so this life is to live with christ which is a really exciting thing to live our lives alongside christ and christ with us 
But then Paul goes on to say that, amazingly, he says death then will bring more. And that really is the message of today, that death is simply a door to so much more. And the best is yet to come. Jesus' love is a love that speaks louder than words. It's a love that speaks louder than the desolation of the cross. A love that speaks louder than isolation. And a love that speaks louder than death itself. And I'd like to just finish what I say now by reading to you some words from the well-known hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thy changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thy hast been, thy forever will be. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today, a bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity, saying, Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, the risen Christ, who stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Help us to turn our hearts to your ways and grant us peace. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Almighty and merciful God, we pray for those who have fled their countries, looking for a better life and have not found it. Some have ended in refugee camps and on the streets. Let this time of reflection for us this Easter inspire generosity in our hearts and compassion that we may love our neighbors and not walk on the other side of the road. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Father God, you are the ultimate healer. We come before you to pray for those who are affected by the virus and other illnesses. Please heal every cell in their body, inside and out, and provide them with every medical treatment they need. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. We pray for those who are caring for the sick, even to the point of placing themselves at risk. We pray for those who are frightened, either because they have to go into hospital at this dangerous time, and for those who have had their treatment postponed. We pray, Father, you will be a source of rest, replenishment, and hope in such overwhelming times. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. We pray for those who are anxious, lonely, and isolated those caring for children and those who are worried for their family and friends in this unprecedented time. Direct their paths so may they find the comfort of your cross. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. We pray for all faiths, those who have no faith and those who have lost their faith. Father, we pray that we will come together as part of your body in Christ. 
Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection of life, we give you thanks. In your mercy, hear us, accept our prayers, and be with us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today on this joyous day, the day when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Uh, we're going to now uh, have a blessing in a moment, but before we do that, uh, just uh, I would love to light this candle as a sign that we are lights in the world. We watched the fire a few moments ago. We have this candle here, which reminds us of, of, of um, Jesus is the light of the world. And this candle, which I'm about to light, will remind us that we go out into the world as his lights. And so the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, this day and always. 
Amen.